<laughs> Get ready for the next round. Welcome to Spaces Arcade. Today, guys, we are going to have a chat. We're just going to shoot the breeze. And I want to talk about a few things that's been not bothering me. <laughs> um, there's a bit of news in here, actually. I just thought, you know what, it's time to have a talk about a few things. And part of the reason for that is, quite frankly, I'm just not prepared to do any other video at this time. I missed last week's video, there's been a lot of stuff going on in the life situation and um, just haven't had the time at all to do it. And I tell you what, just to kick it off, <laughs> time guys, time is an interesting thing. You know, I was thinking the other night, um, there was a, a moment when I, um, was out of work for a little bit. I wasn't actually out of work completely, I had my own business, but it was very, very quiet. And I remember thinking back then, there's a lot of stresses in relation to obviously income in those situations. And I'm sure if you guys have been in a similar sort of um, situation, you, you know what I mean, especially if you've got a family, right? So there's a lot of stresses in relation to money, but the thing that I had oodles of was time. <laughs> And now I'm in a situation where I've um, I've got a really really good job and really really enjoying it and um, you know financially it's all all sweet, but I've got no time. <laughs> I've got no time, and it's a balance, guys. It's an absolute balance. How you balance your finances, your your time, your lifestyle, your health, um, you know your happiness, your friendships. It's very very difficult and I think regardless like when you watch um, you know people even on YouTube you sort of might get a, a sense of you know their life is better than yours <laughs> but at the end of the day guys everyone everyone has their own issues and problems to deal with um, and you know you only see a part of that you know on on camera but of course we don't want to talk about the doom and gloom. <laughs> That's the opportunity that we have, right? We've got the camera set up. We can talk about cool things and have some bit of fun and bit of entertainment, right? And the first thing, guys, I want to talk about, because um, there are a few specific things I want to talk about, is behind me, I've got Ghostbusters running on VPX. And you guys, if you have followed the channel, would know that I did an um, episode on that a couple of episodes ago, or was it the last episode? Jess, I can't even remember now, but anyway, very recent. And I was raving all about that game on Visual Pinball 10 um, and the release um, from monsterbashcab.com, is it? And it's an awesome game, guys. It's absolutely awesome. But what's happened? The table has since disappeared. It has gone from the internet and there was a thread that got locked pretty quickly which was discussing people discussing about why it had been taken down now if you recall back from the the previous video we talked about how they actually managed to reproduce this table because it's using the spike system which is the later uh, there's, I think there's a Spike 2 now as well, or, and, and probably an, another variation of that, but it's using the Spike system that's not emulated. Um, and so the only way they could get it going was to do a bit of trickery, and they ended up using a dynamic link library, or a DLL file, from Farsight's uh, Pimble Arcade. And um, that's because Ghostbusters was released on Pimble Arcade, and in fact through their association with Stern and Stern's virtual version was released on there as well. It's all very complex. And look, the guts of it, guys, is, is that um, it's a Visual Pimble 10 table executing a specific version of PinMame, which has been modified to 
load up the Ghostbusters ROM effectively through DLL. And it's not like, it's not exactly the ROM through the DLL, but I think it's all been re-scripted in the DLL, but it's using the Farsight's DLL um, to then execute the required code to run with the table. Now that's all cool, um, but clearly somewhere along the way, Farsight has caught wind <laughs> of the situation and managed to shut down the um, distribution or further distribution of the VPX table. And to me guys, <laughs> it raises just a, a whole suite of questions about Farsight actually, um, and the situation in, in general. So the thing is, is the, the DLL is really Farsight's code and they've done that code um, off the back of a license that they clearly have got through um, through Stern, effectively. And must be, this must be some complex licensing here, guys, because there'll be the Ghostbusters licensing, who own the Ghostbusters franchise, who would have licensed that through to Stern. And and I, and I don't know which way they did the licensing, but I would imagine the Pimble Arcade is actually or uh, well, through Farsight, they've actually licensed the table rights from Stern, which would be using the Ghostbusters license. It'd be like a sub license, and you can have these sort of structures. And so, effectively, Farsight have sub licensed the Ghostbusters franchise through Stern, um, and and then you know represented their physical table as a virtual one. And the funny thing here, I think, <laughs> it just blows my mind is that for some reason Farsight have managed to shut down the distribution of a VPX table which does not have it is not in itself linked to the DLL it's not packaged with the DLL from Farsight it is purely a VPX table on its own right much like all the other VPX tables are that run in separation from the ROM code and for even for every other pinball game, the VPX table itself is not something that's um, violating um, rights, except for the fact that every VPX table that is using, you know, as a, as a um, recreation of a real table, they're using obviously lots of the, the art and, and so forth from those real tables. So you could argue from that point of view that they are, um, actually infringing on on rights just from the pure table artwork perspective so it's not all squeaky clean just from terms of releasing a vpx table but anyway in terms of far sight situation they can't touch the fact that that table's been released you know if anything the artwork in, on that table is artwork that's been recreated by stern and stern of course have used the license through from ghostbusters so they don't really have a claim to the vpx table so I don't see why the VPX table itself has been taken down. It doesn't make any sense to me at all. I feel like whoever uh, you know owns the website has been um, has folded under the pressure and not really understanding probably the full rights. Um, I may have got it all wrong. I, you know, they may very well have the rights to be able to do that. But to, to me and my simple knowledge of, of licensing laws um, with software, um, I would expect that Farsight have just overreached and for some reason wanted it shut down. Now I say for some reason, because you might go, well, of course they want to shut it down. Oh, it's a direct conflict with their own release and they're losing revenue and so forth by having a VPX table uh, available. Well, that might be so, guys. But the thing is, is that I own that table. I mean, you could use the DLL from the download from Steam without buying the table, but I actually bought the table. I actually support Farsight, and yet I don't actually play their table because the physics are crap and it has no cabinet support. Um, but I support it and it's just so ironic that they should turn around and just give the middle finger to every person that wants to be able to play the table on a cabinet situation and it gets even worse than that guys because at the end of the day 
they originally said they were going to release cabinet support. They had apparently a mock-up version of cabinet support using a real DMD like I have in my setup. And they never they never released it. And I, I think it was I think there was some dialogue around the fact that at the end of the day the cabinet support people, the people that actually have cabinets like myself here, is a very small market. So why invest all the dollars? To do that and I've got so many problems with that whole whole concept given the fact that they're trying to recreate you know pimple experience and in my eyes and if I was running the company I'd be like guys we need to make this as genuine as possible if there is a, an ability for us to show off our software in a real environment and make it as real as possible let's do that just for the marketing just for the the street cred just for the you know, community um, acceptance and promotion, and yet they failed to do that, guys, again and again and again. And they just get bad publicity and press for it. So on the one hand, they're saying, you know, it's just not worth doing, and that's what I can read into it. And again, it may be wrong, but that's what I see from it. And on the other hand, they're going, oh, shoot, there's some people with cabinets using our table um, or using our DLL to be able to <laughs> to play the table, let's pull it. Let's cause some grief for those guys. And it's like, you have the keys to create the software to run properly on the cabs, and we will happily buy it. We will happily buy cabinet versions of, of their software. They won't create it. And on the, on, the, on the same side of the fence, they're going, well, we won't let, allow people to have any other way of doing it either. So you're not even going to be able to do a virtual version any other way on a cabinet. Um, it just blows my mind. <laughs> it, does, it, it absolutely blows my mind. And at the end of the day, if the DLL isn't being actually distributed with the table, there should be no reason why that table can't still exist as a VPX download. So I don't know what's going on, guys. Um, there seems to be some heavy-handed tactics and, and pressure from Farsight. And I just think it's so unjust. Um, and I just think it's crazy. From a business perspective, I think it's a really, really bizarre decision i really do i just don't understand it at all um just from the pure negativity in, in marketing alone i just it, it, it yeah i don't know um and i will say this guys you know on a level playing field in terms of their actual tables and the recreation of the artwork and the graphics and everything they put into their software farsight it's damn impressive it's really impressive and that's what really irks me again it's like they're so close to having just such a perfect product that they just went that extra mile and gave it that cab support and and just really embraced the whole community and 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 for the pinball itself um, they would just get so much more sales and so much more credibility. Um, I just don't, don't understand it. So anyway, guys, that was that was a rant, wasn't it? That was. I think that's my first rant. <laughs> that was my first rant. I got on my high horse there. I really did. Um, but yeah, any which way, we'll see what happens and what pans out. But I personally don't think they're in the right at the moment. Okay guys, so the next thing I want to talk about is Daytona USA Championship. So this is the re-release of effectively Daytona USA back in uh, 2016 or as recently as 2016. And I don't know if you know or not, but back in December of 2017, Sega made a um, pretty big boo-boo when they actually released the entire software as an update on their website for download, for basically free download for effectively the operators that have the game. And of course this was picked up pretty quickly on the internet and so people ended up downloading it and then after a while some people worked out how to actually get it working with a bit of simplistic hacks uh, through a hex editor. It's a really bizarre situation guys because Sega basically provided the free download to their software. I want to talk about this game. <laughs> I want to talk about the game itself because I saw an original video uh, that a, a, another YouTuber did and he did it based on a review of the first release of this, the, this new version of Daytona and it was actually called Daytona 3 at the time. And 
he gave it a really scathing review. He really ripped into it. He thought the graphics were very sort of like 1997 PC style. Um, he thought the handling was terrible. There was terrible dead zone. And it really looked like there was terrible dead zone. He thought the, uh, the cabinets were, were horribly designed, that you're sitting upright like you're in a truck. Um, he didn't like the fact that the shifter had changed to a high-low instead of the four-speed thing, which makes Daytona what, what it really is. And he went on and on and on and just really, just really trod on the game. And, you know, at the time when I actually watched that video, guys, I actually was looking at it and I was thinking, wow, yeah, I'm, sort of <laughs> I'm with you, man. They've obviously made some up updates to it. I mean, that was part of the whole thing. It was an update. So they made a lot of changes to it. So I don't know the differences between the version 3, the actual release, which was called Daytona USA Championship, and then the update, which is the one that I've now played. Um, and clearly there's been a lot of changes, I think. So I wanted to give you my impressions of the game as it is now because I actually think if you see this game in the arcades guys you should go and play it and I think you need to play it in a with a certain viewpoint and perspective in my mind because as soon as I latched onto this perspective I realized what Sega have actually done here and I had to, it was really difficult, guys. You know what it's like when you hear, you know, someone bagging on about something. And a lot of the points sort of made perfect sense. And then you've got, you know, your own opinions <laughs> when you actually try something out. And you've got to try and reconcile it. Go, well, hang on, <laughs> what's going on here? And, and, you know, and I think a lot of things have changed up through the update. Um, and there's a lot of configuration that needs to be considered to get this game working brilliantly. First of all, let's frame it. What is this game? This game is not a release of the Daytona franchise like Daytona USA was to Daytona 2. Because Daytona 2 took the whole concept and then stepped it up a level and had some really freaky graphics in terms of the courses. And, and it's an awesome game. I really like Daytona 2. It's different from Daytona 1. It still has um, the essence of the feel of Daytona 1, but it's not the first the Daytona by any stretch and the first Daytona wins out in terms of overall playability it's the controls it's the track just the classic track design it all works the competitiveness the difficulty in actually getting first place that's all what makes Daytona USA the first one great the second one some of those aspects sort of got watered down and, and, and moved around a bit but it still was a good you know, it was a good version. It was certainly a good step up. Now, Daytona USA Championship, as it's now known, people were expecting it to be the Daytona USA 3. And in fact, I think this is one of the reasons why they actually changed the name. And I think they changed the name because it's not really the third installment. It is instead a recreation of the original. That's what it is. And... If you think of the game in that context, then you suddenly see how good it is. It's not trying to be something different, guys. Um, it's got the three original tracks. It's got three unique tracks, although people have complained about it because the, the second two are effectively the reverse of the original tracks with just different graphics, different time of day and stuff. And the first one's very similar. Um, but that's not the point, you know, the, the, the classic tracks are there, the classic three tracks from the original Daytona is there. The, 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 the extra ones that are the reverse, it's actually, that's actually a bit of stroke of genius because it's the familiarity, but slightly different. <laughs> so they've, they've added a bit of a tweak to it, and, um, but still kept it true to its original form. And the reason why, guys, I think they've done so well here is it takes me back actually to the time one of the episodes um the pimple comp that we had recently and we're at june Delap arcade and uh, you probably saw me get pretty excited the fact that they had four daytona original daytona usa machines there um and i was stunned that they had those those three machines uh, four machines sorry but no one was playing them and i think as good as the game is, you know, people like myself and other people that really know the game and know it really, really well, we're sort of a, 
we're a bit of a dying breed and there's new gamers coming in and there's a younger generation obviously coming in to these places and to capture that younger audience to get them captured into the into the whole feel of Daytona it needed a facelift it needed a refresh and that's exactly what they've done and so if you think about you know I, I, that's what that's when it went like a half for me because I sort of thought those games those four machines weren't being used all the other machines were being used but it was still there Daytona is still there because it has such longevity and there are people that you know would love the original machine but new players will gravitate if the graphics are updated and look to modern standards and so I think they're, they really were attempting to grab the next generation of players re-issuing the same format effectively they you know yeah sure they they dumbed down the controls with the um, high and low but then they subsequently after a lot of complaints they released a full four pattern shifter now I haven't seen that apparently it does exist the original uh, dead zone of the original um, ones that I saw on the YouTube channels that's all been resolved and there's settings to change that interestingly the default difficulty settings is way too easy and you could just go ahead and win a race and as soon as you do that actually you think wow that that that's not the data I know um, but then you get into the settings guys and you can change it and you can get it right up to extra hard I think it's called extra hard just the topmost setting and you set it up that that much difficulty and it's just like the original again um, you can collapse the dead zone down to nothing um, get yourself a four shifter and basically once you do that you start playing it and it's like this is the same feel this is it this has got the same feel now the only caveat caveat to it guys is that I noticed that it it still got a slightly easier drivability and it's the way that the car slides it's almost a little bit more forgiving it's almost like it's got a little bit of traction control <laughs> added to it than what it had originally that and and that's by no means completely obvious but if you play them back to back which I obviously can um, I can tell that there's something there that they've made it just slightly easier if you're getting you know you're hanging it out it just seems to behave a little bit nicer is that a bad thing um i don't think so in the scheme of things once it's up on the extra hard difficulty level it's really hard to get first place anyway um but i would say to you guys if you've seen any preliminary reviews i'd say give it another look go out if you if you're lucky enough to have it locally go check it out in fact go check it out and leave a comment below but i tell you what um it would be great if you could if you if you can get hold of an operator there and actually get them to get into the settings and just see what settings it's set to in terms of difficulty and the settings around the steering wheel because they can be tweaked i think if you find a machine that's tweaked nicely you're going to have a good time so guys that's my little bit of spiel on daytona usa championship um, I think it's a cracking game and I think it's actually it's got the potential to have the longevity of the original it's, it's almost like Sega just wanted to extend that franchise of the original out another 10 years and, and this can do it there's, there's no doubt in my mind um, that, that they're on to a winner actually so on from that let's talk about our next topic so guys my daughter just bought me in this little thing <laughs> <laughs> right in the middle of the video and it's so cool <laughs> look how cool this is so what do you do you tap it <laughs> it, it laughs it's like a it's a laughing pink monkey tap tap <laughs> that is so cool anyway so we'll move on from that and now i want to talk about actually something else that's happening in perth so game city um went offline for a while and there is an episode way back we did filming inside game city in perth and just what an awesome location great concept um go back and check that episode out guys the um uh, game city episode will give you a bit of a, a feel for, for what they've got set up here now they went 
offline because they were going to move premises and they've been offline actually for months um, and I actually sort of forgot about it a little bit in terms of you know if they're even going to come back um, at their Perth City's uh, sorry Game City's new location in Perth City on William Street which is awesome because just literally a block and a half away from where I work so they are now on William Street opposite Central Park for you guys in Perth you'll know exactly where that is smack bang in the middle of the city great location so guys when I rocked up there um, I was a little bit shocked because <laughs> when I went inside I thought wow this is a lot smaller than what they had before and they only had two games they had um, Guardians of the Galaxy pinball and which is an awesome was absolutely awesome and I had a main box uh, two player main box so I was a little bit um, unsure <laughs> and they had all the cool graphics like they did on the original one like all over the walls great paintings and everything I thought wow this looks the deal but this is sort of so small and skinny and there's only two games like what's happened to the whole thing so I was a little bit nervous um, about it I sort of thought wow that's a real shame um, and I also thought wow this this rent is going to be expensive here <laughs> how are you going to get you know people coming into this joint just for coffees and a, you know a, a couple of sandwiches or, or, or burgers or whatever and I went and had a chat with the the guy behind the counter and tell you what guys just like back then I, I'm sure these guys were different to the people that I originally spoke to maybe they weren't I can't I can't remember but they were how nice how friendly it makes so much of a difference hey in an environment like that and the people are just so helpful and and friendly it's just it's great to see and I said to the guy hey you know we saw your original um, arcade and what what sort of happened to it what's going on and he goes oh yeah well that's because there's a whole underground section to their shop and that isn't quite ready yet and he said it's going to have rows of pinball and there'll be pool tables down there and we're looking for a liquor license and after hours we'll be able to turn into a sort of like a barcade and I was like wow that sounds awesome and I was like well how, how do you get down there and he pointed me to the secret door that was <laughs> was stuck behind um, the I think the drinks fridge I think it was and I thought ah okay so there's the entrance so so I was immediately pleased guys because I thought oh that would have been a real shame if we lost all the essence of what they'd built up originally with all the pinballs and games that they had that was so so cool so now I'm really really looking forward to it but until they open that up and I'm not sure when they're going to open the basement up I'm not sure when that's going to be ready but until then guys definitely get down there support those guys um, you know buy some of the food if you're working in the city in Perth just step hop down there for lunch guys it's, it, it will all all those little things will help them out and if it helps them out they'll get more games and that's just good for everyone um, they had a little self-serve thing in there that was really really cool so you can just self-serve off a you know an ipad sort of type um uh menu and i had the Mar like the mario which was like an uh, italian um uh, ham and cheese um, type thing so you could just order it directly and pay pay with your card and then they just give it to you and stuff so so guys yeah check it out great news to see them back up and running um, for the pinball comps um, well there's the Guardians of the Galaxy right there so that's awesome um, <clears throat> the other cool thing was it was free play um, you know brand new stern pinball on free play uh, while you're waiting for your order just go and have plenty of games so had a lot of fun although my games were shit my games were crap anyway i'm not going to say any more all right guys well i think we probably have talked enough for this episode um it was definitely something different guys wasn't it we didn't sort of do anything specific but i thought it's a good opportunity to give you a bit of an update on some key things that i've been thinking about i wanted to have a chat with you about um and it all comes down to the fact that I haven't had time really to progress a lot of other things. I have done some things on the Sorcerer Pinball for example, I haven't done much else um, in the arcade here and I really do want to get back to it. But it's all a balance guys, I've just got to balance everything up. But until next time, make sure you do subscribe, if you want to check out the next Pimple Comp video, it's pretty cool. Make sure you subscribe, give it a thumbs up if you like the video, keep commenting guys, love your comments. 
and I uh, hope you enjoyed it and until next time look after yourself and I haven't played a single game but to play a game I'm gonna need um, I'm gonna need some money and oh god where did I put my I put my wallet oh man I don't have it I don't think I've got any money got a 20 <laughs> Second fight like a robot.